Well, fir first things first, we need some bait. So Winger's Mark bait deep on the sounder. So I'm dropping a sabiki rig, which is basically six hooks, and they've got little flasher attractive things on them. And we're dropping it into the bait that we've marked. So you're just in the free spool to the bottom with a big sinker on, on, the, on the end of it. And we get down to the desired depth, which is about 60 fathoms or about 120 metres. Yep. Doesn't usually take too long like that. You got one on. One on. We've got three hooks. I want to make it worth my while to wind it up again. I want to try and get full load. Definitely got two on there. Alright, bring them up. Okay, so the plan today is we're just going to move around just inside the shelf of a place called Jarvis Bay, or JB for short, which is in there about 18 k's. Now we're on the continental shelf, so out here that 80, 90 metre water drops off into a few thousand metres of water. This is like a structure zone, holds bait, where anywhere that holds bait in this beautiful cobalt warm current, which is called the EAC, chances are there's going to be marlin feeding on that or other predators. And the good sign is, the reports are that there's marlin around and there's a lot of boats out today, so it's a good sign there's fish here. Those nearly got it up, we'll show you what the bait is. It's called a slimy mackerel. Seriously, man, this is serious bait coming up now. It's up to 30 fathoms. It's a, it's a 30 fathoms and thick. Have a look at this. Something's going on there, Dave. You got bait on? You may notice this is very heavy gear for catching live bait. The reason for that is we're using a very big sinker to get down into those depths. We've actually caught marlin on this rod and reel before, believe it or not. And now it's our bait rod. <laughs> we don't want to be mucking around, taking a long time to get our bait, and we want to get it in quick, get it out there, and try and get our marlin. Two oh. slimies and a yeah. Yeah, look at the size of those slimies. There's just some good colour on them. Sorry. Look <laughs> at the colours on them. I'll get him in the live well. <laughs> crusher. We love the Crusher live well. We thought about getting tuna chews, but we don't have to. This that keeps them live all day. And that's uh, that's going back in the sea. They still eat them, they'll eat pretty much anything, but slimies are probably the preferred and, and we don't want to overcrowd the live bait tank either. Yakas will steal all the oxygen. It's a really simple little rig, just a little bit of flash on it, see like green and the pink. But the difference with these ones and the ones that we use in Western Port to catch out gummy and snapper bait is that they're much heavier duty. Because you saw the size of the slimies we were just pulling in. You need a big hook or you're just going to straighten them every time. Quality, no skimping on quality. No. We use nothing but gamakatsu ones, mate. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty poor example. I haven't done very well there, but we got it through. Just really got to get him in the water now, nice and quick. Awesome marlin bait. Rattled him up. That's wax thread straight through the front of his eye, uh, his eye tunnel. He's still happy. He'll swim all day. What hook is that? Onto bait? a big gamma 80 circle hook uh, on a 130 pound fluoro leader. So all I do is toss him out there, make sure he's swimming. Cheers. Fits the left. I set him how far back I want him. I want him just behind our teaser that we've got splashing out there because that marlin's going to come up and look at the teaser and before he gets to the teaser he's going to spot our slimy swimming around and he's going to hit it. Grab our main line, flip it into this little rigger clip. That's in there. As soon as the fish hits that, that pulled out like that and we're connected. Hooked up on this boat in front of us. All right, so hurry up, Dave. They're hooked up. Now, now he puts it out on that pole, everyone. That's a rigger. That gets it right out wide of the boat. And then we just throw it behind the boat. Now straighten up, Gopal. You gonna check the boat or? Yeah, 
Well, we've just been towing two slimy mackerel. We're out here off JB. Been a red hot stripe marlin bite. But we desperately want one. Well, we've, we've done it with. Oh, he's on it again. He's on it again. Oh, right, get down the hole. Let him go down. Let him go down. He's feeding that slimy back out. He's been nailed. Has he got it again, has he? Yeah, he's got it. Come up tight on him. Yeah. Right, slowly wind up into it, mate. He's doing his down. Yeah. Doing his down, or he's at the back still, isn't he? All right. Wind into him. Might have missed him, eh? All right, keep going. No, there's nothing on here. We're all going on about one hour sleep here at the moment. And the day has just begun. We're just going to head back now. We're going to head back to the boat we found earlier. And we're going to repeat the process. And just swim the light. Just walk the liveys around over the boat like we did earlier. Okay, okay. Put in gear now. Slowly go up on him. Slow. Yes! I think we're fine. Right, other way. Make the drag up a little bit, buddy. Have the daylight later. We're on, winger. Hey! That's awesome. Just let me guys, the black bar crushes on, boys. Just give us a bit of rev, thanks. That was awesome. We've never done this before. We've been doing it for about 10 minutes. That bait on the other side's been whacked about three times. And this bait out and the rig has just popped out. We've just slowly done the drag up because we're using circle hooks. So what we want to do is let him run with the bait. And I slowly move the drag up and pull the circle into the corner of his mouth. We made the call to come up here at 12 o'clock last night. We left. We got here at 10 a.m. We've come out here, we've got our bait. First time we've tried using baits, we've been having a lot of trouble getting hookups with lures, so we switched to baits for this trip. And straight away we've had a we've had a hit and we're hooked up. Your first marlin, mate. Yeah. That's how we stay connected. Oh, mate. mate, we are not very experienced at marlin, nah. but. We're very passionate and we made the move to move when we had to move, didn't we? Yeah, we did. At 10 o'clock last night, I was sitting at home watching television with the kids. On a Saturday night, Horsey sends a picture through of a screenshot of a report from Jarvis Bay where a bloke had a heap of marlin. I rang Dave and said, mate, we're rolling. And we did not muck around. We've been trying, this, trying to get ourselves a marlin for years, so this actually means a lot to us. Just to see it and get it beside the boat and touch that leader. We're not killing fish. We're not keeping fish. We just He's done it, he's gonna be green. Isn't he? Yeah. Heavy tackle we're using here. This is 37 kilo line. We wanted setups that would cover both blues and blacks and shots. And our tuna. Here he comes, he's coming up. Oh there he is! Up top out there. What a seasoned marlin fisherman are probably going to be. Thinking, oh. They're probably going to think, oh, he's taken off. It's taken a long time to get a small fish in, but I'm just savouring it. I'm loving this. Right, come up here, guys. Give the ball to Corsi. First bait in the water. He's 
not using a lot of energy. He's only jumped once and he hasn't done any big runs. So basically, he's pretty green still. So <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be quick. The problem we've got is... Watch, the, watch the line. Going down, coming towards us. The problem we've got is our live baiting rigs are only 130 pound fluoro. We drop right down to try and get the bite. And that's worked, but... Uh, now we've got to stay connected. We can't be on for too long or he'll wear through it. What an achievement this will be for him. He just comes there. And that's, and that's the sitting arm range. That is 60 pounds of drag. Look at him. They got him up at it? Yeah, yeah crowd, mate. I just put the boating gear then and fed the boat up. Got the fish's nose up and now he's coming up, which is what we want. He moves the boat into the current, so that's going to help plane the fish up in it. Here he comes. Oh, he moved up quick then. There he is! There he is! You see that go ball? Yeah. It was good to hear the other boat caught one on 80 fluoro, so... Yeah. On the radio before, so it gives us a bit of hope that the 130... I mean, the 130's done as well on big barrel tuna. Yeah, well, we know with the big tuna, when we've landed our fish on the 130s, it's not even been scuffed. But then they don't have big sharp things hanging off their heads, so... They have to do a sharp teeth, though. The good thing is it's a circle hook day. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully it's just... Yeah, there's yeah. not much line, actually, contacting him. Here comes the wind, everyone. and get stuck in him now. While he's resting, I'll try and get him. I'm fighting a big game fish. This is a good position to be in. We're getting blown off the fish. When it comes time to land a fish, you never want to have the boat getting blown onto the fish. Or you run a really bad risk of him going under the boat and cutting you off. I feel pretty lucky that out of three or four or five boats working the same area as us, we got that fish up really quick. These guys all, I assume, are pretty seasoned game fishermen, so it's a bit of luck going our way finally. Makaira Indica, Black Mound.
It's a natural thing for Marlon if they eat something too spiky or something they don't like. They throw their stomach up to try and get it out. We've got a way to release this fish properly. Dave's had his had his hand on the trace, he's, he's leaded the fish. Now we want to bring it alongside, try and get a photo. That's the next goal. So we're just trying to, it's trying to swim under the boat now. We're just going to keep it away from the boat. Let's go to the other side there, Dave. You can steer him out to that side, mate. Right. You're in? Yep. Every time.
Yeah, that's possibly a good amount. Just go under the boat. Just clear the motor. We don't know enough to know. This is a lot of drive, that's really big. Isn't it? Yeah. the ultimate photo, yeah. but in game fishing, when you're fishing that light leader, most guys just grab the leader and just go pop and it's a capture. You actually played him like majestically there for 10 minutes extra, just to get your dream photo, but I'll tell you what, we've got dream footage. We've got some classic aerials, mate. Just absorb it, mate. Just absorb that for a few minutes. Oh, so pumped. So pumped. That was a big solid fish. That was massive. I don't want to put a weight on it. Oh, well, put, well, now I'm not sure if it's a blue or a black, mate. I don't know why. Just because of where we hooked it. But, um, was... oh, we're over the shelf. Yeah. We hooked it on the shelf. Oh, no, he did go deep. Yeah. Not, not that I know. It's first marlin. Just pump those. First marlin on the first day on about a 50 millionth trip. A little bit of inspiration came in last night by the text. We just raced up here. Dave's still hitting himself. He thinks it's not a capture. He doesn't. He's so hard on himself. Ah, it's a capture. It's a, it is a capture, he knows that, but he wants the photo. But Dave, hey, we've got mountains of footage of a man handling it beside the boat and virtually breaking it off. We're not even up here officially filming, it's just me holding the camera, driving a boat. Gopal's up, up, up next on the rod. This is going to be interesting. Skeletor is going to get broken. 